We're uh, talking about Watch Review, and this is part three of class 301-06. And uh, we're going to, today to uh, Genesis chapter six, going to read from verse one, and uh, we're going to read up through verse eight. And we're going to be taking today the Watcher View interpretation of what we're reading and do some discussion on that. So read Genesis 1, chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is, uh, he also is flesh. Key statement we're going to come back to right there. Yet his days shall be an hundred and seventy years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Uh, notice it said in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old. Men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord saw into the minds of men, notice that, and that his imaginations were evil continually. Perverted, in other words. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Okay, uh, using watcher view interpretation here, uh, not Africanus view, not angel view, but watcher view. Make a couple of statements. As you know, in watcher view, we look at the Bible as being a particular history of a particular set of peoples, the biblical peoples, things pertaining to them, the promises of God pertaining to their lineage from Adam, not Seth, but from Adam all the way uh, through Seth, of course, but also Cain and the others. That's where we differ from Africanus view. Um, we believe that what is happening here is being discussed for this time and also for times after that was that uh, <clears throat> created beings, uh, here they're called the sons of God, uh, in, translated from Hebrew of Binah Ha Elohim, um, looked down, looked from their vantage point. Uh, these are the ones that were in the antiquities and the book of Noah, uh, excuse me, the book of Enoch, uh, that were called the Watchers. Uh, in Watcher View, these were angels uh, of the heavenly host and watchers, whatever they were, whether in, 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 in class to lead you, uh, later in verses where they left in, in different books of the Old Testament, their former habitation came down to dwell among humanity and marry daughters of humanity is all that's mentioned in the Bible. The females of this particular group were not mentioned. Um, and what they did, we would, we would assume, being as how the Old Testament is written from a masculine point of view, that it's just speaking of the males as being the, the more, the dominant factor. Uh, doesn't mean there wasn't females. It leads you to imply by assumption that there were only males, but that would not make sense, would it? For there to be males, but no females, because there would be no need for there to be males if there were not females. Because we would normally associate male and female as, as uh, procreation of uh, capability for regeneration from generation to generation. In Watcher View, predominantly we 
assume that these beings, that these creatures, as we are all creatures, angels, humans, everybody's creatures, these particular ones were biological. Uh, why? Because they were male. It mentions male. Uh, implying biological uh, capability uh, as we know it in flesh. They were perhaps immortal, uh, perhaps, perhaps not. We know that Adam was regenerated. Uh, Adam and Eve would have been regenerated by the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Uh, that's why they were not allowed to go back to the Garden of Eden, so that they would not partake of the tree of life. Read that for yourself in the Bible uh, in previous chapters. So uh, understand uh, some prerequisite reading and study for consideration is required for all of the classes at this point. We're up to semester three level now. So understand we're assuming some Bible basic knowledge already built in. We can't go into every reference, every verse, because we take away from the intellectual discussion consideration of our our views at this point if we took time to do all that. So we're going to just look at some of the things that's being said here. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, uh, from, the, from this uh, statement, there's a separation between flesh and spirit. Now understand that immortal beings, in whatever state they are, these uh, creatures of the heavenly host, are both flesh and spirit also if they have flesh. Indeed, if they have flesh. Uh, from the context of the story, we can tell that these particular ones did have flesh. It would be an even greater assumption to assume that they took on flesh, that they completely changed their very physical uh, definitions of their own power in order to dwell among men. I'm not saying that's impossible. I'm just saying from the reading of the context of the scripture, it implies they were fleshly, simply by the fact that it mentions they were of male, uh, you see, these particular ones. Um, it just excludes the female part. And now, uh, verse 3 says, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Now, understand that uh, when uh, anything immortal uh, comes down and, and, and interacts, uh, especially uh, procreatively, uh, uh, in reproduction as a species, uh, basically a hybrid, crossbreeding with humans, then uh, the nature of both creatures come into play. And that's really what this short statement is about, that he is flesh also, meaning that the, the two uh, destinies of the two spirits become confusion. That is iniquity. Iniquity had come into play here, the act of iniquity, in other words, transgression to the law of God. Man had already transgressed, understand that. But uh, a man had, in, had transgressed in dealing with temptation from already a previously fallen creature, which is known as the serpent, um, who was cursed to crawl on his belly like the other snakes of the field. So that's a separate set of circumstances. In this particular set of circumstances, it goes beyond that into the place to where that there's actually um, – Marriage, uh, uh, re, uh, reproduction, things taking place. We don't want to get dirty with it. Uh, some do, and we want to keep it out of the gutter here in our discussion. But the point is <clears throat> that these creatures that were born were not truly man as Adam and Eve were uh, the prototype of along this particular line of people. But they had become a hybrid now. These children that were born of them were mighty and devout men of old. Now, the, the word giants in verse 4 there, and I want you to keep your Bible handy so you can do your own reading in there. Uh, verse 4, when it's talking about giants, this is taken from the uh, Greek Septuagint translation, the word giant, of gigantes, which even though... <laughs> the there were giants in the earth in those days. Now, what classifies a giant according to size, uh, in other words, how tall, how wide, how broad, how big, uh, is basically an interpretation of traditional standards. Um, 
I would say today anybody who was over eight foot tall, eight foot tall or taller, we would consider them to be a giant, even over seven foot tall maybe. Just depends on the traditional standards at the time. Now back in these days, the standards may or may not have been different. It just depends on the standards of the time. Uh, from the Bible, you're not able to really tell this except in the story of later on as it gets into uh, later up in the chapters of uh, different books of the Bible. It talks about David fighting the giant Goliath and uh, how Goliath was a giant. It's described of him where he had six fingers, six toes. And it's also described where his brothers, the members of his family, also had six fingers, six toes, and were all giants of all also. Also, others who were called giants are encountered when uh, the children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt, came through the wilderness, and their spies were sent into Canaan. They reported that they saw what they called or referred to as giants in that time, very large people. Uh, regardless of exactly what size they were, they were kind of called giants. But now in this particular reading in verse 4, the giants, gigantes, from the Greeks at Tudor, is taken from the Hebrew nephal. Nephal meaning earthborn. Uh, well now, uh, first off, let's, and their children were called the Nephilim in the Apocrypha. Now let's, let's just say this. Why would the Greek word mean earthborn? As though there needed to be some uh, clarification. Uh, the very fact that it means earthborn means that there's got to be a clarifying that these were born on earth, not somewhere else. That implies that there was the possibility of consideration of them being born earth otherwise. In other words, uh, one of their parents were not of earth. Get it? Uh, it's just a matter of analytics. So, uh, and I'm assuming that most of you have that sort of uh, mental process that you would be an analytical reader. So uh, when we begin to really look into these scriptures, we begin to see a much larger picture of the landscape than, than what you would consider just on reading with a more limited view, such as uh, Africanus or Angel View. Now, Angel View is pretty broad. Uh, it, it just limits the heavenly host in what it can be by definition, whereas uh, Watcher View expands the possibilities of what can come down from the heavens. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be what we term today in our modern standard concepts of what we have grown as a culture to think of as angels. So keep that in mind. So today what we want to point out here is, is that the earth had taken a drastic turn, and it points out the main reason, in other words, the people of earth, the, the biblical people here, had taken a drastic cultural change, uh, and the reason given here is pretty clear. It's because of these that came down, uh, the sons of God, uh, the Benaha Elohim, uh, had come down and taken unto themselves mates of earth. And very shortly after that, and it also mentions after this, it says, and after that, Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. I apologize. Uh, but notice later, uh, the Lord, it says that he, it repented him that he had made man. This simply means that it was very uh, impacting upon the Lord that that choices, and this, this also points out that even though man has a destiny, a preordained destiny, that Things took a course here by choice, forks in the road stuff, folks, to where the, all of mankind that he, the Lord was looking down, the biblical peoples now. We're not discounting the possibilities, in fact, the likelihood of other civilizations on earth at this time in other places, such as China, ancient China, uh, South America, places like this. All uh, in conjunction with what's happening with the biblical peoples. Remember, the biblical peoples start with Adam's line and, and work forward from there. And uh, you don't have to really be a Bible scholar to be able to understand that the creations during the diary journal of Moses 
describing creation is just a testimony of great complex things and not necessarily a limitation to individual 24-hour days like some take it. Um, in, in some ways, it's kind of tragic for some that, that don't study and don't read in deep that, that uh, simply it can be taken away. But understand, faith operates that way too. Uh, it's just the fact that we understand that God accomplished it is the faith. So regardless of which way you interpret this, uh, don't misunderstand me. Everything is a matter of salvation in truth because it, the Bible later, I'm going to refer to the New Testament, clearly states in uh, John chapter 16 that the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. So understand, the spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. And truth is very much pertinent to proper interpretation. So that being said, we're on a journey of uh, following the Lord and being led into truth at this point. But when it comes to watch your interpretation here, um, I'm going to, uh, in this summary, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, under 20 minutes. What I want to point out is I want you to read very slowly and consider each phrase and statement of Genesis chapter 6 down to verse 8. So let me continue reading that verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It's going down and and knowing that, uh, pointing out that, um, uh, the Lord was noticing this one particular man and it gives the, some of the reasons and, and these particular these are the generations of Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations so you got to be very careful how you interpret that perfect in his generations when we think of generations we're thinking a line that is unpolluted uh, at least that's the way I interpret it and when I look at this I see what the story in context is talking about is genetically uh contaminated lines of mankind and it's saying here that Noah uh, uh, basically what I'm reading is saying to me Noah was genetically a uh unaltered unchanged man from the line of the biblical people from Adam and Eve that he he his father his mother uh, those preceding him were not of a mixed genetic with the Benaha Elohim, the sons of God, which came down. Uh, now, uh, the possibilities of who these were is wide open, folks. We know that they were, according to antiquities, uh, according to the books of Noah, very ancient books uh, attributed to the authorship of Noah, by the way, uh, through information passed down to him from his great-grandfather Enoch. So understand, there's uh, there, there's quite a bit to validate that based on the findings of the Dead Sea Scrolls proving them to be very ancient books indeed. Possibly the oldest written documents on the face of the earth today. It's very possible. Uh, copies of that anyway. Now, has it been corrupted? That, that's hard to say. Uh, that's hard to determine because all we can examine is what we have in hand. Things found from the Dead Sea Scrolls to validate things we already had in print of other documents. So it's a, a very deep and uh, uh, the comparative study goes to a lot of places. But in Watch Review, it's very important to understand a differentiation here. We're introducing our Watch Review. Watch Review allows for interpretation here of what some might call aliens. Beings from other worlds that are biological, whether or not they had uh, regenerated properties in their uh, genetics um, is, is, is unknown. Uh, uh, I consider information from the books of Enoch, which I have, I'm in my seventh study of, of it at this time, in other words, my seventh reading, uh, quite useful in interpretation of the landscapes of understanding here. Uh, but what I want to say is uh, many of us have been taught wrong about this. Uh, I feel I was taught from a very limited perspective, uh, basically not allowing for certain information 
to uh, get through the filter before it ever got to me in my early upbringings in doctrinal uh, examinations and interpretation views. And I am very thankful that uh, the Lord stirred within me an interest to look to other other depths and places and possibility because it really opens up understanding of the Bible uh, in a way to me to where that we can read it without a restricted field that requires us to always follow a particular line of interpretation. And to me, uh, in many cases, a broad study broadens our information base, allowing us to compare and separate. Doesn't mean that we don't filter things out by the spirit of truth. We do. But it does alter uh, the knowledge base from which we make our determinations about beliefs. Inevitably, the spirit of truth in reading the Bible uh, is what defines what our belief is going to be. Now, I have my own personal reasons for taking the uh, favoring the watcher view. Some of you, I understand, may come, and most of you, I'm sure, do come from a totally different background of, of what you were free to even consider, uh, because there's some folks that try to control what you think. Uh, I broke away from that controlled environment uh, at great effort. Uh, I, 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 I self-declared myself, I'm not going to be bound to what you guys tell me I have to believe. And I have come to the place I examined the Bible, and I asked the Lord to open up my understanding to let me see according to his leadership. Uh, you've got to be that bold in order to go to these places. Now in uh, part four, and we're going to follow this, this is part three. In part four, I'm going to go into some places uh, in my own personal experience. Uh, things that God has allowed me to see as a young child way before I ever even come to know the Lord. Uh, that are unique, that made others very uncomfortable, that the Lord just allowed in my life that I see, and it's, it's very rare. And I am very thankful for it, even though at times it it was very difficult for me. It caused me a certain amount of of anxiety because of others' attitudes and views about what I was telling them as a child. The Lord allowed me to see some things just so I'd know about it. Perhaps it was the key vehicle, and I believe it probably was, that caused me to examine the Bible with a broader understanding about things that are there because the Lord showed me they were there very early in life. And I had to keep them secret uh, for a full generation. Uh, I was forced to. And I'll, I'll share that with you in uh, <clears throat> part four. It's going to be some personal testimony about why I believe watch your view to be the correct view. But it doesn't change anything about salvation, folks. Our salvation depends on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ on our confession in him, taking on his name, the name of the Lord in baptism, and receiving the glorious gift of the transforming power of the gift of the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to pray a dismissal now as we get prepared to move into part four, which will be posted uh, within the next few days. So Lord bless each listener, each viewer of this YouTube channel who have found this particular study I pray that they will also glean from our other posted instructional videos and educational videos as well as our sermons, topics. And I pray, O oh Lord, for the places you're going to take these listeners in their understanding. And ask, O oh Lord, you will lead them and guide them in greater truth and higher heights and deeper depths of understanding. In the name of Jesus, bless their souls today. Lead them in a closer relationship with you. In Jesus' name. Farewell. This is Alan Childs, THD, bidding you farewell. Until our next time, God bless. Have a wonderful day. Amen.